This video is brought to you by Ripple.it, a powerful platform for educators, learners, and developers that makes coding and collaborating easy. Use the name Sean Pritchard in the link below to sign up today and start programming in your browser for free. All right, so today we're actually going to start talking about loops in JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript offers all kinds of different ways to iterate through different data sets. Uh, but the three basic types you need to be aware of is the for loop, the while loop, and the do while loop. Now, there are several different variations of iterative loops for the for loop, such as the for in method and the for of method, which are more specific towards objects and arrays. And then we have our conditional loops, and we have higher order array loops. These are tools that let us loop through um, arrays and different uh, objects using these types of higher order loops, such as map, weak map, set, and for each. Now, in this video, I'm not only just going to show you how loops work, um, we're not just going to go through the programming code, we're actually going to go and we're going to hand trace uh, these coding problems. So that way you can have a fundamental technique to actually apply in your day to day while you're either learning JavaScript or whether you've known JavaScript and programming for a long time, uh, these techniques will help you figure out what the logic is visually uh, while you're doing it. All right, so before we actually get into going over some code and, and discussing loops, I wanted to talk to you about JavaScript scope. It's really fundamentally important to understand that JavaScript uses lexical scoping, which is unlike other object-oriented programming's namespace and global scope. Now, I'm going to show you an example of what I mean here so you kind of got a better understanding uh, because these are the types of things you're going to need to watch out for, especially when creating loops, functions, and methods, and uh, building logic with JavaScript. So I'm going to go ahead and block that out. Uh, we got just a basic function here. Uh, it's called scope. And uh, what we're doing is we're passing a parameter of 10 uh, in here. And then we are going to kick that down here. B is going to become that. And then we're going to return these values. Simply, all we have to do is use this little tracing method where we put the variable A, uh, the variable B, and then the condition variable A plus B in here. And we trace out all the values of this statement. Now we can do this with functions, we can do this with loops and many other parts of programming. Uh, and this really helps you to visualize and see what the code is actually doing. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it this way, which I highly recommend that you start doing, especially if you're a new programmer. Uh, but I'm also gonna show you how to do this in your IDE or your text editor uh, to where you can actually put the code in there and we can loop through it. But let's go ahead and let's run this and see what goes on. So we got 20 back because a was 10, B became A, and then we added those up. When we talk about JavaScript scope, um, what we're talking about is global scope, which basically means that uh, if I made this value a global variable, that uh, this should be able to be used in all the functions below it, or all the methods uh, that are being associated in this class or on this page. Well, in JavaScript, um, these get overridden uh, with the lexical scope. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. You see that the parameter overrid this A15, so it, it doesn't matter that this A was even here. But now if we go ahead and we declare a variable um, A equal in a value inside of the function, now watch what happens. Now we get 52, and that's because this value right here has overridden not only the parameter, but everything in the global scope as well. And therefore we cannot use global scope in JavaScript uh, when passing variables into functions and so forth. And you really need to understand the importance of this uh, when conducting uh, logic and building programs because if you're building programs in JavaScript, uh, you might run into a lot of problems trying to pass in values uh, if they're not within the correct scope. So I have a whole nother video that goes over um, lexical scope and JavaScript, so go check that video out. Um, but let's go ahead and let's get into some loops. And don't forget, if you're getting any value out of this video, go ahead and give me a like. So let's go ahead and let's talk about our for loops. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking our input, uh, a number, a value, an array, an object, and we're putting it in a for loop, we're initializing it, we're running it against a condition that says whether it's gonna start and go, when it's gonna stop, uh, and then we're using a final expression um, to validate the condition. And then whatever's inside the loop, it's going to execute. Any statement within the, in the loop is going to execute. And this initially gives us a specific output. 
when we're talking about for in loops, uh, what we're doing is the in statement and the of statement, these are actually methods on their own that actually take a variable, which this is just an initialization, uh, and it runs it against the object. So we have three different types of loops, and these are all for loops. So let's go ahead and let's start breaking one down and let's get into it. So first of all, um, I just wanted to let you know as well that all this code will be available in the link below so you can go play with it and mess around with it all you want and practice your loops. But anyways, this is the first for loop. Uh, basically what we're doing is we're setting i um, to zero. We're initializing an empty variable. And that's what i means. It means initialization. That's what it stands for. And then if we go i less than seven, this is the condition that uh, our loop has to meet before it's able to execute an end. And then we have our last expression, which says that we are going to increment the values until we meet this condition. See what I'm saying? And um, basically, we can output the statement in here and we'll get specific values. So let me clear this out and let's go ahead and run this. You see that we get loop 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, the reason it starts from zero, if you're not aware, because in binary and programming languages, uh, in any arrays or objects or loops, we always start at zero. Zero is the binary um, incrementer. Uh, we always start at zero when incrementing uh, any number in program. So let's go ahead and discuss this real quick. And I want to show you how we can actually hand trace this out. So um, essentially what we're doing is if we look at our hand tracing code here, we're starting out at zero. It's initialized at zero. So that means I is less than seven is at zero. And then once we go ahead and start the program, it increments. So we got one incrementation. That makes I one, which makes I less than seven one. And we follow that every incrementation all the way till we get to six here. Um, and then you see that that takes and turns to six, that value turns to six. And then we do our last incrementation at seven. And since we've reached that seven, which matches this condition here, we have to break and we can't add no more numbers. So you can see here just by tracing out this code in this manner, we can actually figure out what the loop's actually doing. And we can see here what the loop is actually doing on our left hand side as well. So it's really good practice, like I said, to try to get into uh, hand tracing out your code, especially when you get into more uh, nested loops and you know more complex logic, it, it really helps. Um, but let's go and look at a reverse iteration. Basically, we're going to do the same thing we just did here, except we're going to reverse all of our initializations and our conditions. So here we are going to initialize a variable to seven. Our condition is that we're going to be greater than zero, and then we're going to use the d increment sign, which is minus minus. Let's go ahead and clear the console, and run this, and we can see here that we got seven through one. Now, why didn't we get to zero? Well, the reason we didn't get to zero um, and I could show you this as well. Let me turn this back on. That is because here what we are doing is we are starting uh, the initialization at seven. So that means that i is less than seven is zero. There's nothing at it. It hasn't done anything yet. And that means that i minus minus has to start at seven. So we're going backwards. We're doing this in reverse. Um, so once it goes ahead and fires off, um, it's going to count down uh, to six. All right, and then it's going to actually uh, put the incrementation here seven, and then we're gonna go all the way down until we get to two. And then once it gets to two, I is gonna break, and the rest of this loop is gonna finish out. So basically our de-incrementation, if we hand trace this out, it's gonna show us that uh, we are not gonna go any further uh, than one. Now we can test this out simply by uh, going over here to our condition and uh, modifying that to a negative number. So let's do that real quick. So let's run this. And you'll see here that we actually get zero, but now we are you know, breaching the scope of our initialization by actually putting in more value over seven, we're actually breaching eight incrementations there. So that's why that happens. Um, so reverse iteration is, 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 is exactly opposite of regular iteration through a loop. Now let's go ahead and let's check out some other types of loops. So let's look at a loop and let's work with um, an actual object. We're going to got this array right here. It's got about nine different names in it, just simple elements. And what we're going to do is we're going to initialize our variable to zero. And then that's 
i condition is going to be less than the length of this actual array. So the length is actually the number of elements within this array. So there's nine elements, which makes this type right here, um, this condition dynamic because I can add elements and I can remove elements, which would make this number smaller, which means that this incrementation would either have to work harder or slower. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump down here with a conditional statement using the if statement, where we're going to say i is equal to four. Once that's equal to four, we're going to break the loop right here and we're going to come back up and finish the loop out and we're going to log all this as it goes. Let's go ahead and test this out and see. And you can see here that it's exactly what it did. We can see here that number four isn't even there. So it stopped right here and it did not finish going down here and it went right back up to the for loop, started all over again. Now if I was to go ahead and put break here and actually run this, you can see that it will just dead stop right as soon as it gets to number four and it won't even continue but these are conditional statements we can use with if is break and continue but either way um, that's working with an actual object now let's start talking about the four in loops all right so the four in loops um, are really cool and the way that works is we have an object uh, like this for instance with key value pairs first name key sean the value and uh, we've got three elements of keys and values in this object and we can use the for in loop to actually run through that loop. Now what we're doing is we are initializing an empty variable which we can call this anything uh, literally I can call it anything as long as I uh, you know make sure that's changed in here and what that variable is going to do is take this object here and the functionality behind the scenes is within this little in statement here where it actually uses some logical methods uh, to iterate over this object um, and put it in that variable, put the output in that variable. So let's run that and actually see what happens. And you see here that it's actually um, going to output our values and our key value pairs. But now let me go ahead and put the V back and let's go ahead and put that other part back and I want to talk to you about this just for a moment before it actually gets executed by the methods of the in statement here um, what's going on is we can actually evaluate the keys and the values within this initialization and that's what I want to print out so let's go ahead and do this now doing this this V will actually give us the keys while storing this array value set here will actually give us the values. Now it's a pretty complicated way to get both the keys and values out and I'm going to show you a much better way here in just a minute. But you can see that basically working with for in is giving us a way to actually work with objects. So let's go ahead and let's code that out and let's go ahead and open this next example here. So basically I got another object, a student's object with three elements in it and they Students each have a score associated with their name. Now, JavaScript comes preloaded with um, the objects methods, um, which allows us to work with specific objects. And you see I've got one for objects keys, and we have one for object values. And I don't know why the repo keeps that grayed out here, but either way. Um, and you can see here, if I clear this console and we run this, um, it's going to pull out the keys in this list and the values in this list uh, for an array. You can see here that's exactly what it did. It pulled out all the all the keys, and then here it pulled out all the values, which seems pretty simple. Now let's go ahead and let's use the for in statement. So here we are just going to use the same object, and here's the actual statement. I want to go ahead and change this from of to in. Now what we're going to do is we're declaring our constant. This is our initialization as a 2D array with the keys and the values here. Let's associate keys and values. And then we're going to run it against that in method, which iterates through whatever objective we're doing here. And we're going to run it through object entries um, based off of this student's object. And we're going to pull out all the entries and we're going to output the keys and the values right here to the screen. So let's go ahead and run this and let's see if it works. Now you can see here using the in statement, we're only getting the output 0, 1, 2, and then we're getting it's undefined here. We're not getting the keys, we're not getting the values. So why is that? Well, when this statement was originally uh, built, it didn't have objects in mind. It was more for arrays and other types and prototypes. 
uh, and this is a really handy function to have, but this is why JavaScript developed the for of method uh, to iterate through loops. Now the for of method has different logic behind it, iterates over objects specifically, and it loops over values that are generated by them. So let's go ahead and run this and see what actually goes on. And you can see here using the of statement, we can directly work with objects and iterate through objects now uh, in a really nice and easy fashion that's easy to work with. So just know that that is the main difference between the for in method and the for of method. Now I can show you another simple little for of loop down here. And you can see they do essentially the same thing uh, when we're talking arrays and static data. And I can go ahead and clear this console, run this, and you can see here that it's going to outprint A, B, and C. Now if I change this to in, let's see what happens. You're going to get 0, 1, 2. So just know that when you want to work with arrays and objects and you want to iterate through them simply, um, then you want to use for of when you're just using constant values and you're, you just need to do some basic loops to run statements. Um, then you can use the for in statement. They're both really good and they both have specific purposes, uh, but one is more geared for objects and arrays of that sort. All right, so now let's talk about some while loops. Basically, while loops are the most basic of basic loops you're going to find in JavaScript. And simply, they take a condition, and while they're looping around, whatever statements are inside of it get executed. And as you're going to see here, basically, all we're doing is the same thing we did with the for loop. We initialize a variable, we set a condition, and once that condition is met, um, the loop stops and all the code that is inside was getting executed the whole time. So we have an initialization variable of zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to loop through that um, eight times and once we get into the loop we're going to increment the value and once that i value, the, the initialization, equals five uh, we're going to skip over that so we're not going to execute the console log. We're going to go back up to the loop and run it again and keep going. Um, so let's actually run this and see what goes on. Now you can see here that uh, we went from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Do you know why that is? Well, I'll tell you. Um, it's because we initialized the incrementation uh, within the actual loop. We have this set to 0, but that doesn't get logged out because console log is in the loop. Now if I was to set this outside of the loop, you see that we'd only get eight double time there. Now why is that? That's because uh, that global scope and that lexical scope thing in JavaScript that I was telling you about uh, kind of deforms all the nature of that. So let me just go ahead and show you with the hand tracing method that we've been using. I is going to be um, zero because we got to initialize to zero. That means that I less than eight is zero because nothing has went through it yet. But once we hit that incrementation at one, well, we're doing that inside the loop, so that means i becomes 1 automatically. So the loop gets started here, and then we just run over, and then those values carry across. So by the time it gets to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, it becomes 7 down here at i, carries across, so the condition's almost met. Then incrementation becomes 8, which matches the condition, so that means it's the end. Uh, then it puts those values at 8, and those values at 8 there. But we're not recording these values. These don't get printed out first uh, because that's what they are initialized at. We're actually starting from here. You see how we're one space off? So these are the numbers in our output that we're going to see. So let's go ahead and run that one more time just to verify that. And you see here that we're just getting 1 through 8, not 0, because we override 0 with this incrementation here. Well, now let's go ahead and let's check out how a while loop works on arrays. So here I just got an initialized array, it's just empty. I got an initialized initializer, which is I, and we're going to do the same thing except our condition when we get in there is that we are going to push um, the, the value of the incrementation into that array uh, to build us an array. Uh, and then we're going to increment to keep going and so forth and so on. And then we're going to print the, uh, the, the scope of that array. So let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. You can see here that we got an array 0 from 8. Now that's happening because this is after the condition and you can see where our console log is in comparison to the other console log. And you can see here if I took this and put it on the inside 
that would get a lot different answer about the uh, array and you'd see that it's actually how it's actually being implemented and broke down because we're logging everything that's going on inside the loop okay so once it increments from here which is below the push then you can see that I becomes one that value condition becomes one and so we go ahead and we get to push a value into the array which is one let me see we get to do that here um, on our list let me go ahead and move this over so you can actually see this so if we look up here um, in our values we see that that's true so if we keep going around we can just trace out the loop um, until the condition is met once we get down here to seven um, we can see that it's going to print out seven variables in our array so you can see it just follows around like the rest of the functions and now you can probably see some patterns in hand tracing this code and how things work with these loops uh, you can see that it validates our claim and it does the same thing that the output shows us here so now let's go ahead and let's talk about the while loops so we're doing something and while that something is being done we're going to be doing a loop so we're going to do something while we're in a loop that's essentially what we're going to do do while loop pretty intuitive so let's go ahead and check this out we're going to initialize an empty variable so we can have us a counter and we're going to make that little counter variable there increment and then once it increments uh, we're going to continue once we get to five here and then we're going to console log the values while we are iterating from i to eight so we're going to do eight loops and we're going to continue once we get to five we're going to shoot back up do the loop process over and continue on so you can see here it actually works really well we're incrementing like we're supposed to we skip five that was one of our statements uh, and then we outputted our values uh, as another statement while we did eight loops. Well, let's go ahead and let's look at a couple other examples. And this is our last working example. Let's go up here and let's talk about what we're doing. Now this is a actual function, a loop, that does something that you might be familiar with. We're going to find the max values out of an array. What we're doing here is I've declared uh, a variable max, a, which equals the length, of the array which is just the number of elements within that array and then uh, I've instantiated the I variable now even though I got it called out here um, I wanted it here for a reason that's so we can record it but what are we doing here we're iterating through um, based off the length of the array and what we're going to do is we are going to count the array uh, to find the max number so we want to find the biggest number in here all right so I'm actually going to put this here 556 why not just to test this out and if the max number equals the biggest number in the array then it's going to output that max number so let's go ahead and let's run it and let's validate that it does what it says it's going to do let's run it again boom 108 let's put 656 and yes so far it works and it's great so now let's go ahead and let's kick over to visual studios code let's actually trace through this code using the debugger and doing the same thing that we were doing with hand tracing but actually visualizing it here um, in the code editor so what I'm gonna do here is um, you can run and we're gonna start debugging uh, when we do that it's gonna give you some options if you're using VS code if you're running JavaScript I just press node.js and uh, what we're doing here is uh, we're setting these breakpoints we can click these dots to the side of the numbers and these dots here and what's gonna happen is it's going to stop on each one of these dots and the values for all the uh, variables that we have instantiated are going to be recorded while we go through this so you can see here we have a we have i um, now i can get i in the global scope here if i scroll down but i didn't want to have to deal with all these numbers and this is why i wrote the variable i uh, here so we have a little storage um, for our numbers and you can see it is I know somewhere around here it's in that scope but it's a lot of stuff to dig through basically and that's why I put that that variable right here to record these numbers that are going on here now you see everything is set to zero uh, we have you know ten objects in our array and let's go ahead and change that let's take one out let's see if that update and let's step through that and you see that all we're doing is pressing this down arrow here to step through 
our function and you're seeing that it loops and we can keep going through it and you see that it's found a max value um, right there which is zero now if I press this one more that value is going to change to 23 that's the first biggest number that it's found now let's go through again and you can see that I is on three now four now and you can see if I just keep pressing this it's going to iterate through all the values now we're on number nine there's only nine variables left because I changed it now we're on 10 10 doesn't exist so we have 108 which is the largest value um, out of there and you can see here that it's ready to output this max value in our console log and we could even put a breakpoint on that as well and you can see that it'll stop right there but we already know the answer that max is 108 now let's double test this by actually going through here and let's put in like 1025 and let's put in uh, 1080 and um, then we'll mix it up a bit with uh, 4060 and we will put this as a negative number to make sure that we are actually getting a number that is not negative but a positive value that is the max value so we can use the controls up here to press stop and we can stop this then we can go to run again start debug press no js you see now that we have 12 values in our array which makes a dynamic variable uh, and then we can iterate through these and we can count what actually goes on and we can find what the max value is you see we just click and it goes ahead and gives us incrementally every bit of information that we need Thousand twenty-five, number eleven, ten eighty, and there we go. Now it's getting ready to output that to console log. So this is essentially what I wanted to show you um, as how to actually put these breakpoints in, step through, and use your debugger um, to logically trace out what's actually going on in these loops. Uh, and you can do this with functions or anything as long as you have. Uh, a variable or something that the uh, IDE can actually see and store the values in uh, then you can trace and record through all of that so I hope you guys got a lot of value out of this video if you did please give me a like and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification for more awesome coding and programming videos that I got coming your way hey do you want to know what type of gear I'm using or what type of computer build I've got or maybe you're just looking for quality gear that has been tested and researched personally by me. Well, so head over to kit.co forward slash Sean Keith to find out.